Yo. Um, I hope this works. I'm about to get philosophical again um, on owning things. And this time on the topic of video games. I guess especially retro video games, but just video games in general, kind of. Uh, there is Tyrannigma playing in the background on my arcade machine, which has been hacked to be able to play Tyrannigma, run Tyrannigma among various other video games. Um, but there's kind of no point to that because I also have Tyrannigma on cartridge and I have a Super Nintendo right there hooked up to the CRT so I could just play Tyrannigma on the actual hardware if I wanted to but why would I do that if I could play Tyrannigma in Japanese on original hardware because this Super Nintendo is also modded to be able to play games of every region but why would I do that if I could play Tyrannigma on the go on my hacked 3DS but there's no point to that because I could just play Tyrannigma on my fucking Switch which I'm not gonna run right now because some other game is on standby or whatever but I also have Tyrannigma on my Switch, um, as well as on my arcade, as well as on original cartridge in English and in Japanese. And you know where I'm actually playing Tyrannigma? Nowhere. But you know where I would probably most likely play it if I were to play it? On my phone. Just on this emulator on my phone that I downloaded like two days ago and realized it was actually like not a bad thing. Like that's actually a good way to play games. Uh, and the question I want to get to is how did I get here and where do I want to go from here? Um, and now I'm going to lean back and tell you the story of Tyrannic Ma and myself. Um, Oh, also there's a poster of Tyrannic Mart there. Yeah. Um, it's my favorite video game of all time for no particular reason other than I like it, I guess. Um, and I got the game when it was new. Like, I was in fucking Walmart or whatever with my mom and my best friend and his mom at the time. And I wanted Lufia for Christmas, like we were inside of Walmart to like basically pick out which game we wanted to get for Christmas. I wanted Lufia, my friend wanted Tyrannic Ma. I was three years younger than my friend, so I also wanted Tyrannic Ma once he wanted Tyrannic Ma. Um, there was a little bit of an argument with our moms, like we're not gonna get both of you the same video game, you can just lend it to each other. And I was like, no, that, that's not how it's going to work because I'm going to play it on Christmas Eve and I want to play it then and he's also going to get it then and I can't lend it until like he's done with it at which point I will not care for it anymore. Probably just said wah, wah at that age but that's probably kind of the thought process behind that wah, wah. Um, anyway, we both got it. I played it on Christmas Eve. Immediately got stuck in like the starting town, didn't know what the hell to do. Uh, called him and he told me what to do and I could progress and I never finished the game but I got kind of far and had fun it was a great time uh, and then I guess I stopped playing it at some point right and played other games and then maybe I got an N64 at some point and I played more other games newer games um, eventually I discovered the internet and the fact that there's ROMs and you can just download Super Nintendo games and play them on your PC without paying for them, which I did a hell of a lot as a kid when I first got internet. Mm. But I still got like new consoles, right? And you couldn't just download like an Xbox game back then. That was like too much data and hacking an Xbox also involved like 
doing things I didn't know how to do. So that kept going. And eventually I made my first money and started getting into hacking consoles. Like I have a hacked Switch, a hacked DS, 3DS, PS1, PS2, PS3, Wii. It's all hacked. I have a hacked arcade right there. Um, and my Super Nintendo, my N64, are all like modded to play uh, all games from all regions and have like RGB output and whatever the fuck. Like just, you know, the best things you can do to a console to have it be like the best version of itself, I guess. Um, and that stuff I did at the same time that I got like my first or uh, my only Xbox 360 and a Wii. And I um, hacked both of those back then and landed games from like Blockbuster, or German Blockbuster or whatever, burned them at home. So I had the copies to play forever and gave them back. And I kind of got into this whole thing of, I just want to have the games. I don't really care for the package or whatever. Um, but then I, for some reason, started getting into this whole, no, it's got to be the, the best thing that it could possibly be. So I sold all my PAL games and got all NTSC versions of games, which, let me bring those up. Uh... That's here at the bottom row. That's all the Super Nintendo games I own these days uh, because I sold all of my PAL games because I thought they were inferior um, because of reasons, hurts or whatever. And I modded my Super Nintendo to have RGB output to have like the best picture quality possible. I got like this CRT that has like cool RGB, whatever. And I intended to only like to really relive those memories or, or whatever, which I did for a tiny little bit, but then kind of stopped. Um, and now it's just gathering dust over there. Uh, I lost my point, but I somehow ended up in this situation I'm in right now, where I have Tyrannic Ma on like six different systems and I, I'm not playing it. Um, like, why would I just play this old video game from back then? Well, why would you? Why is all this important? Why do I have all this? Why do people have all this? Um, I, I And I'm pretty sure it's to keep that memory alive. You know, that memory of back then when I got that game for the first time and I played it and I called my friend and I progressed in the game and I could like escape reality through that video game and the feeling that that gave me. Um, I guess that's what nostalgia is about, what I'm like trying to resurrect by having all this. Like, what's the reason for having Japanese Tyrannic Ma? It's to actually learn Japanese, which is never going to happen. You're not going to learn Japanese to play a video game. Unless you're like, I don't know, really into video games, I guess. Um, but that was the idea behind having this version. And uh, to like, you know, learn even more about this video game that I loved so much. And then I have the English version here because as a kid I played the German version. Um, to like, you know, be able to experience that version of Tyrannic Moon. Um, and then why do I have it on all the, the handhelds and just a version? It's, I guess, to just be able to play that game anytime that I wanted to. I don't know. Um, but now I'm like asking myself, where do you like look at this um i have this these are all my japanese super famicom games they're all in japanese so i cannot understand any of them um and most of, most of them are rpgs so it's kind of there's kind of no point to owning these if you cannot understand japanese 
the idea was to learn Japanese, be able to play those, and even like learn Japanese by playing them and like trying to understand what they say. So that's why I still have them around because I still have that idea of learning Japanese that way. Okay, so that's why I own that. Why do I own this? Um, that's all the guidebooks to all the From Software games. So Elden Ring, Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, uh, Bloodborne, the DLC to Bloodborne, all got a, like, a book. And also like special editions of Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3. Um, and the idea there is to play those with the guide and like experience the entire game. Right, like not just have my own run through the game, but like see everything. That's the idea there. Uh, I own these big box PC games. Um, and I also own these on just a dual case CD. So there is no reason to have these except for maybe having the booklet and like the back of the box that you could look at and be like, oh, yeah, cool. Like, you know, the back of the box is just cool to look at. Like, look at this. It, like, makes you interested in the game, right? It makes you want to check out what the game is like when you see that. So that's, I guess, the reason there. Then there's this, which is a shitload of jewel cases of PC games which I can play. I have like an old PC that plays those, but that's just a lot. That's a lot of games. Some of them I played as a child. Some of them I did not, but most of them I like have nostalgia for, which this is all about nostalgia, all this. Um, and then the last thing I have is this, it's a statue of Kerrigan, um, Kerrigan. It's kind of a theme with me. That's my mouse pad. It's not that big. Um, and we have this. Some Dark Souls statues. And I had a similar video on Magic the Gathering, right? Where people then suggest, like, I was like, oh, I have all these cards. Like, all these cards, this is just a single deck and it's a hundred cards that all are kind of not that cheap. Um, but I don't want to own all that expensive stuff that I'm barely ever using. So some people suggested I should do proxies, which is this stuff. Just print out the magic cards, cut them out. And like put them in a sleeve and use them instead and if everybody you're playing with is fine with that and you're not like printing a fucking black lotus um then that should be fine and that's a way to keep playing magic and keep having your decks without having all this dormant money lying around um and i was like all this thought came when two days ago like for for weeks for months i've been trying to find games to play, play on my phone because most of the time I spend playing video games is when I'm on like public transport or I'm in some social situation where I don't really know what to do so I just play video games until enough time has passed for me to uh, be in some situation or whatever and I was just not finding any great video games until I was like, wait, this thing is just running RetroArch on an Android. So couldn't I just get RetroArch on my Android phone? And yes, I can. And it basically plays exactly the same games that this arcade plays. So now I have all these games that I can just play on here. And I've stopped caring for this stuff a long time ago because I realized I'm not using it. Like I'm not gonna sit down and play a Super Nintendo game like I'm eight years old 
on the floor because whenever I'm home, I got shit to do. I got to work. I got to go buy groceries. I got to do the laundry. I got to clean up. I, I want to meet with people. You know, I, I'm making food. I don't know. There's always something to do. There's never a good moment to sit down and be like, okay, I'm going to play Tyrannigma for two hours now. If there's a moment like that, it's mostly going to come in like a situation where I have my phone with me and kind of nothing else, which is also why I had the stuff on these because I had like that thought already. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to carry my 3DS with me on my Switch so I can play and pass time when I'm like on the go. But this stuff is too heavy too. Like I don't want to carry a Switch around all the time just in case I might want to play something because it's fucking heavy and you have to keep it charged and all this kind of stuff. So in the end, even though I'm like a video game enthusiast and I love all this shit, like I'm displaying these Super Famicom cases up there because I love how they look. Um, but in the end, I'm probably going to play all of these games that I want to play on this phone and kind of nowhere else. I still think it's nice to have like an arcade machine. Like if somebody's over, I can be like, hey, wanna have a game of Street Fighter? That's cool. Um, and there's, you know, these Japanese games. Maybe I'm gonna get into learning Japanese. Like I've been to Japan. It's not like, this is like a complete dream that, that never is gonna make any sense. Um, this From Software stuff, that's rough because <laughs> Those guidebooks are so expensive and I've never even gotten close to play any of those games using those guidebooks to sit down and do that. Uh, but maybe I can sell all of these games because I can play all of these games on my phone. There's no reason to, to own these, basically. Also, the, ben the batteries are like gonna run out in the cartridges and stuff. The CDs are gonna wear down from the dual cases of the PlayStation. Yeah, I, this has been a very rambly video. I didn't intend it to be like that, but I guess I do get rambly when it's about video games. In the end, um, I guess it's just about what what do you want out of video games? Do you want to collect them? Do you want to have this and display them in a way like that? If so, you should probably limit yourself to like the your favorite 10 video games and cap it off and not like, you know, keep buying and buying and buying stuff. Um, and then when it comes to just having cartridges like that, just to be able to play them, like these aren't, for display much um, maybe just sell them and play them on your phone uh, I guess and then when it comes to like books that's kind of hard for me because I love like flipping through a book and uh, the idea of playing a video game and reading a guidebook at the same time and not like having a game facts text file open which looks ugly as fuck but actually like having this cool designed guidebook with all the screenshots and stuff that's a cool experience but maybe don't buy all the guidebooks at the same time and intend to you know use them but buy one and buy the next one once you've done the thing with the first one I don't know uh but I guess that's me on video games and owning them and what to do about that. Uh, well, has been more rambling than, than posing question or solution. But hey, that's how it is sometimes. Well, thanks for listening to me ramble on about video games. Tyrannic Mars is a great fucking video game. You should all play it. Hmm. Yeah, that that's that's it. Goodbye. Thanks. <laughs>